Welcome back and in this video we're going to be going over the hot topics for paper 2 and if you haven't seen the hot topics for paper 1 you can go watch it. Having said that, again disclaimer, you need to be revising every single topic that comes up in paper 2. The ones that I'm going to tell you shortly is topics that you need to focus an extra 10% so that when it does come up you're not caught off guard. Also with paper 2 you already know that 30 marks worth of questions are just pseudocode questions. Mostly students struggle with that. So if you're one of those students, go check out the playlist link in the description or uh, should pop up. So go check that playlist out. It goes through everything that you need to know about Python and uh, pseudocode. So having said that, let's dive straight into the hot topics for paper two. So starting off with 2.1, that's your computational thinking and in this topic, we're going to have more and more of those questions that um, ask you to apply your knowledge of the three um, computational methods. Uh, abstraction, decomposition and algorithmic thinking. These three things, um, we've seen definitions in the previous papers. However, this time we're going to get an application question. So make sure you're confident with applying what is meant by decomposition, what is meant by abstraction in a real life scenario. So for example, if we're de developing a game, how can we use abstraction to um, simplify the processes? Something along those lines. So make sure you're confident with that. And 2.1.2, that is your flowchart pseudocode trace table questions. And the topic that I think that's gonna come up is a flowchart question. So make sure you know all your symbols and make sure you've had enough practice creating flowcharts. I've gone through many flowcharts on the TikTok, so go check that out if you haven't already. Uh, 2.1.3 is your algorithm questions. So searching algorithm, sorting algorithm. Last year, we saw a question on insertion sort. This time, I reckon it's going to be a bubble sort question that has, for example, the one that comes up on the screen, what is meant by the swapped variable or the sorted variable and the temporary variable. Make sure you know your pseudocode. And for that, I've made a special video for you guys. You guys are so lucky. You get all of these resources for free. When I had my GCSEs, I didn't have any of this. So please, please, please go check it out and go revise. Watch that video, it goes through all the code. I know no one covers code. I'm covering code and how to do those algorithms. So make sure you're confident. You should be able to do it in your sleep. Also, I predict that we're gonna have a uh, searching question. So make sure you're confident with the precondition for binary search and uh, the difference between binary search and linear search. Enough of 2.1, let's move on to 2.2, which is your, is your programming fundamentals. So this, again, this is a massive topic and you should be basically knowing everything that's um, inside it. However, we haven't seen questions on local variable and global variable. So make sure that you're confident with these two and you know the differences between local variable and a global variable and when we would use a global variable. Also, a key um, things that students always prop, uh, make mistakes on and is very likely of OCR to ask are your string manipulation techniques. So for example, dot length, dot substring, dot left, um, dot right, all of those, make sure you know also your div and your uh, modulus operators. Those are ones that always caught students off guard in the previous papers. If, again, if, you're, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out the playlist. Again, that is your best friend for paper two. Also with the length function, students always get caught off guard with dot length function. So if you have an array with one, two and five, that's three elements. So the length will return three. Most students forget that and in the exam, they put two because they think it's indexed, so zero, one, two. Don't let that be you and go watch the pseudocode versus Python video, it should pop up now. Go check it out, it goes through the differences between py uh, Python and pseudocode, which students always confuse and they always make silly mistakes. All right, 2.3, this again, defensive design, it's a very short topic and a straightforward topic. Make sure you know you're testing uh, the ways to test. So for example, invalid test, erroneous test, uh, valid test, normal test, boundary test, all of those testing, make sure you know it. This is a fairly straightforward topic and around 10 marks worth of questions that you can see. So yeah, make sure you know it. And again, 2.4, this is your Boolean logic 
and logic gates. So with this, make sure you know your truth tables for it. And we're not going to be asked simple questions like, and fill out the truth table. We're going to be asked to apply it to a real, real life scenario and combine the logic gates. So make sure you've done enough practice for this topic. Just do practice, practice, practice. You can find practice questions on the website. You should already be practicing. And 2.5, again, this is your ID and languages. This is a short topic. So make sure you are comfortable with high level, low level languages, what the differences are, what the advantages, disadvantages are, and the ID. We always see an ID question and I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see one. So to summarize, make sure you know your programming fundamentals. This is over, third, uh, over a third of the paper, it's going to be like pseudo code questions. And some things are pretty standard. For example, you're always going to get a question on SQL. You're always going to get a trace table. You're always going to get some sort of file handling and um, programming constructs. So make sure you know the standard topics and the topics that I did say Make sure you devote 10% extra so that you're not caught off guard when OCR try and do you dirty. That's been it and, and hopefully this has helped every single one of you and, and I wish everyone best of luck for your 2024 exams. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.